Hi everyone, I'm Shahnaz from CrochetDreams.com and today I'm going to share these very cute teddy hats with you. They're really soft and squishy. It comes in four sizes and today I'll be demonstrating the newborn size. If you would like to make it in any other size, please check out the written pattern on my blog. You will find the link in the description box below. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and please press that bell icon to receive notifications when I post more patterns. To make these cute hats, I used Burnett Baby Blanket Yarn, which is a size 6, super bulky yarn. And along with it, I used a 10 millimeter crochet hook. So gather your supplies and let's get started. To work round one of the hat, I will show you two methods, one with a magic ring and one without. So you can choose whichever one you're comfortable with. So let's do the one without a magic ring. Start with a slip knot. Chain three. Work two single crochet into the second chain from your hook. This is the first and this is the second. So work two single crochet into the second chain from your hook. That's one and that is two. Work four single crochet in the next chain. One, two, three and four all into the same chain. Now you will be at the bottom of your foundation chain. Now work two single crochet in to the next free loop of your foundation chain here. I would like to go under the junction of the two loops rather than going into just one like that because it's going to leave a hole so I will go into the junction of the two loops and work two single crochet. This leaves a hole as well but we will close it while weaving in the tail and it's a tinier hole. So now we should have eight stitches around our work. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. So we should have eight stitches and we won't slip stitch at the end of round one. So now I'm going to show you how to work this round with a magic ring. To make a magic ring with the tail or the end of your skein in front of your hands, wrap it around two fingers loosely like that. Insert your hook from behind into that circle you formed and pull up a loop. Now hold the base of that loop and chain one. And before I proceed, I like to take the tail out like that. And now I'll go ahead and work eight single crochet into this ring right here, working over the tail as well. It is going to feel a little odd. Just work your single crochet into the ring and every time I pull up a loop I try to bring my fingers to the base and hold the loop so I have more control and then I yarn over and complete a single crochet. So insert your hook into the loop, pull up a loop. Now when you have two loops left on your hook Move your hand to the base of the loop that you just pulled up and then yarn over and pull through two. Keep repeating that. Now we have worked two and six more to go. Insert your hook into the circle, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. So that's the third one. So let's go ahead and work a total of eight, four, five, 
Notice every time I pull up a loop, I move my hands to the base of that loop and hold it so I can easily pull my hook through. How many do I have now? One, two, three, four, five, and six. Two more to go. One and two. So I've completed my six, no, I'm sorry, my eight single crochet into the magic ring. I keep calling it a circle, sorry. So now it's a time to pull and close this ring and that's why it's called a magic ring. So I would suggest you pull it gently and not make it too tight. Just enough to close that hole. Yeah, like that. So now we have completed round one with a magic ring and we should be having eight stitches around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So now let's proceed to round two. Now let's begin round two. We did not slip stitch at the end of round one. So we will work directly into the first stitch of round one next. So work two single crochet into the next stitch, the first stitch of round one to begin your round two. So I'm going to work two single crochet in the next stitch. That's one and that is two. And now I will mark my first stitch. And that will indicate the beginning of round two. Now work two single crochet in each of the next seven stitches. You don't have to keep counting. When you reach the stitch right before the marked one, this is the marked stitch, and this is a stitch before the marked stitch. And when you work two single crochet into that, that means you have completed the round. So go ahead and work two single crochet in each of the next seven stitches to end in the stitch right before the marked one. So two single crochet in each stitch. And at the end you should have 16 single crochet stitches. Your round one had eight. Now we are doubling it with two stitches in each. So you will have a total of 16 stitches at the end of round two. So I just have one more stitch to work into because the next one is a marked one. I'll work two into the last stitch. And that completes round two. You won't slip stitch at the end. So this completes round two and we can count the number of stitches around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and the marked one, which is the first stitch. That is sixteen. So now let's begin round three. Take off the marker. Work a single crochet into it, just one single crochet. That is the first stitch of round three. So we will place a marker in that stitch. Now work two single crochet in the next stitch. And in the next you will work one, then two in the next, one in the next, two in the next, one in the next so you go one two one two one two all the way until you end in the stitch right before the marked stitch since you started with one single crochet your last stitch in the last stitch you will be ending with two single crochet so let's begin we have already worked one single crochet in the first stitch now we will work two in the next one in the next, two in the next, one in the next, two in the next, one 
one two in the next one one in the next stitch two in the next keep working like that one two one two one two all the way to the last stitch and after this round you should have 24 stitches one and in the last stitch right before the mark stitch I will be working to single crochet to complete round three and if you count your stitches around you should have 24 stitches including the marked stitch here and now we'll start our even rows without any increases that is we'll keep working one single crochet into each stitch around but we'll still use the marker so we can count the number of rows after you remove the marker work a single crochet into the marked stitch place the marker back that will indicate the first stitch of round four now work one single crochet in each stitch across all the way to the end you can stop when you work a single crochet in the stitch right before the marked one that is how you know you have completed the round So this is round four, our first even round with no increases. And now that is the last stitch I will work into because I'm right before the mark stitch. I will work a single crochet into that stitch and that means I have come to the end of row four. And now we have to work three more repeats of row four. That is three more even rounds until our hat is four and a half inches tall. So go ahead, take off the marker and just like you worked Round four, work one stitch in each stitch around and don't forget to place the marker back in the first stitch of the round. That is every time you work into the marked stitch, move it up into the stitch, you work into the marked one. So go ahead, work three more even rows and I'll meet you back. This is how it looks after completing three more rounds and it should measure around four and a half inches in height. If you think it's shorter, uh, if, it, if you think it's short, much shorter than four and a half, I would advise you add one more row here before proceeding with the next steps. And at this point, before working your next stitches, I want you to make sure your hat can lie flat. I found that it doesn't lie flat in some directions like this, see? So you have to find where it can really lie flat like that so it would be easier for us to attach the ears so this way it looks good now find that fold where it works where it will lay flat and then we can proceed to the next step so before working the last round what we will do is work single crochet stitches all the way to the fold here and slip stitch the back loop only of the stitch on the side and then we will begin the last round so let's go ahead take this marker out we won't be needing it anymore work a single crochet all the way until you reach near that fold
and now I have reached the side of that fold and into the next stitch I will work a single crochet into the I will slip stitch into the back loop only of the next stitch now chain one one single crochet into the back loop only of the same stitch so that is the first stitch of our, of our last round now all the way across you will be working only into the back loop this is the front and this is the back loop and insert your hook only under the back loop and work a single crochet all the way around until you reach back near the first stitch so without inserting your hook under both the loops you will go just under one of the loop at the very edge and keep working single crochet stitches all around I'm almost at the end of my round and I will know I have reached the end when I see the chain one keep working single crochet in the back loops only all the way to the end of the round okay now I'm at the end of the round and I have no more stitches to work into so I will just go ahead and slip stitch into the very first single crochet we made into the back loop so that completes our hat and now we will make the ears and attach it after you slip stitch cut the yarn and pull the yarn strand out without making a knot Before we start making the ears, it's very important to see how you can weave in the tails in the best way possible. Now let's weave in the ending tail. Thread that. And what I like to do is I will go under the next stitch, under both the loops of the next stitch. And then go into the first stitch so that kind of evens out the edge like that and now you can go ahead and weave in the tails inside the hat weave in your tails back and forth inside the hat And now you can trim the hat. Now you can trim the yarn. Now let's weave in the beginning tail. And if you started with a magic ring, it's very crucial that you weave in the tail very securely or your hat is going to fall apart. So if you use it, if you used a magic ring, you have to weave it in this direction, go back and then back again to make sure it's secure if you started with a regular slip knot then you just can go ahead and weave it in the regular way just go back and forth a few times but in this I like to go in a circle around the magic ring Don't pull it too tight and then go back in a circle like that. You 
don't have to go all the way but then make sure you go in three different directions around the opening now I'm going to go back again one more time And now you can go ahead and trim that. Yeah. I'll turn it inside out again and find where your hat can lie flat. Sorry about that. I just hit my camera. So, okay, that looks good. And now we are ready to attach the ears. And you can see the free loop running here, which gives the brim a nice look. So now let's go ahead and make a couple of ears and cut back and attach them to the top of your hat. Now let's make the ear. Chain three. Two single crochet in the second chain from your hook. This is the first and this is the second. Work two single crochet into the second chain from your hook and two single crochet into the next chain. So that is a total of four single crochet in this row. Now chain one and turn, work two single crochet in each of the four stitches. Two in the first one, two in the second, two in the third, and two in the very last stitch. Go under both loops and complete two single crochet. Now leave a 15 inch tail for sewing and then you can cut it. Now pull the tail out, thread it through a yarn needle, run your needle in and out through the base of your ear, the flat or the straight base along that. You run your needle in and out through the edge like that in out all the way to the very corner and then pull the tail and pull it tight the tighter you pull the smaller your ear will be since we're making the smallest size I will pull as hard as I can to cinch it and make it tiny when you're making the bigger sizes you may not have to pull so hard. The next two sizes have the same size ear, but the biggest one has a little bigger one. So for the next two sizes, you might have to singe it a little less to keep it bigger. So now we have made one ear. Go ahead and make one more and I'll show you how to attach it to your hat. I have now made two ears and let's attach them to the hat. See where you want to place them and then I'll show you how to sew it down. So now I know where I want my ear to go. So let's attach the first one. Make sure I cinch it tight. I'll leave this tail behind for now and work with the long tail. I will catch one stitch on the hat and 
the corner of the ear like that and do a whip stitch. Make sure you're not catching two layers of the hat. It's pretty much impossible to do because it's really thick. So just work along the surface of the hat and along this curve right there. Just go under one loop on your hat and one loop on the ear. I think I need to catch one more loop here, you know, bring it down like that. So I'll just weave it in to reach that corner back. Yep. Don't want to pull it too hard. And then I'll catch, try to catch that loop there as well. Yeah. That looks better. And now I'm going to take the needle into the hat and weave it in there so that our ears won't move. Do that back and forth, a total of in three directions. So that's one. Go a little longer, maybe one inch before you turn and work in the next direction. And I'm going back. And I'll just go one more time. It's up to you if you just want to do two. But when you do your magic ring, if you choose that method, definitely make sure you go three times back and forth. And now you can trim the yarn. So one of the ears is attached and we have another tail hanging behind the ear, which we will weave in the same way. We will take it inside the hat and then weave it in. So go ahead, thread that yarn tail, bring it inside and bring it very close to the ear so you don't tug on it. And then weave it in. Just go back and forth. I'll just do a couple of times this time. And just one more up. And now trim the yarn. Now go ahead and attach your next ear in the same way. Make sure you position it right when you do the second one. And then I will come back and show you how to attach this tag if you want to. I know some of you are really interested in my tag, so I'll show you how I attach it on my baby hat. I have now attached both the ears and let's see how to attach a tag to your hat. I ordered these tags from Etsy. I got them custom made for me with a CD on it. I'll leave a link in the description box below if you would like to get yours made. And this is how I attach it. For me, these are like regular size tags and if I attach it, it, it to a newborn size hat it looks too big if I just fold in the middle and if I attach it like that I feel like it's just too big for a baby hat so what I do is I tend to fold it like this with a little extension there and I'll first sew this part down and then sew the back so only a small portion right up to the base of the C or the letters is showing in the front and the tag will look small enough for a newborn hat so I'm putting it right under that line there like that and what I will do is use a regular needle and matching thread. Come from under through the hole on top 
and then I sew it like that on the surface use a thread that matches your tag some brown color or beige color or whatever and then I will knot it inside I'll knot it a couple of times I don't want it to fall off and then trim the thread Now we'll go ahead and attach the other side in the same way coming from under or inside your hat and now you can do it just like you did the first tag I mean the first through the first hole And go back in and make a couple of knots there and you can trim off the yarn and now fold it in like that and you can see that the inner part is longer but since we are not going through all the holes in the front and the back at the same time it doesn't matter now you can go in and sew through these just like you did with the front side so go ahead attach the back of your tag and your hat will be complete if you enjoyed watching this video don't forget to like subscribe and press that bell icon to receive notifications when i post new patterns thank you so much for watching